Hello guys and welcome to Free Shiksha. Last lecture was an introduction to matrices and in this lecture we'll have a look at the different types of matrices. So let's start with the row matrix first. So it is the matrix with just one row. So if you represent a matrix A by Aij, this is the representation of a matrix where we define and constrain the i and j of this A. So for row matrix, your i will always be equal to 1 and your j will always be greater than 1. So you can have only one row, so your i remains equal to 1 and your j could be anything, so you can have multiple columns available. So an example could be your 1 cross 3 matrix where you have one row and three column. Similarly, you have a column matrix where you have one column and different number of uh, rows could be there it could be 3 it could be 4 the matrix will be called a 3 cross 1 matrix or a 4 cross 1 matrix then you have a square matrix where your i is always equal to j so the number of rows and the number of columns remains equal in the square matrix it could be a 3 cross 3 matrix it could be a 4 cross 4 matrix also next you have is the diagonal matrix so it's a square matrix where all the elements except those in the leading diagonal are equal to zero. So you see here, this is called the leading diagonal which starts from i equal to 1 and j equal to 1. So all the elements of this leading diagonal are non-zero and all the elements apart from the elements of leading diagonal are equal to zero. Then it's called a diagonal matrix. So your a, i, j is equal to 0 for all i not equal to j. It has to be an n cross n matrix so it has to be a square matrix and if d1, d2 till dn are the diagonal elements then you can represent this diagonal matrix as d1, d2, dn under the square braces. Next is the scalar matrix so it's also a square matrix where you have the non-diagonal elements equal to 0 and the diagonal elements have the same value and that too constant. So you see in this example all the elements of the leading diagonal are equal to 12 that is they are equal and the elements apart from the elements of leading diagonal are equal to 0. Such a matrix is called the scalar matrix. So you can also say that it's a diagonal matrix where the elements of the diagonal are all equal. Next we have is the identity matrix which is one of the most important type of matrices and uh, why is it called the identity matrix I'll tell you after the description so it's the matrix where the non-diagonal elements are all equal to 0 and the diagonal elements are all equal to 1. It's called the identity matrix because if you multiply any other matrix with this particular matrix then that matrix remains as it is. So that's what you mean by the identity. We have one as the as the multiplicative identity of any number. So if you multiply any number with one the number remains as it is. Similar is the concept here. If you multiply any matrix with the identity matrix we'll see how you multiply two matrices in the coming lectures. So if you multiply any other matrix with this matrix, then the matrix remains as it is. So it's a diagonal matrix with all the elements equal to 1. It's represented as capital N, capital I and this small n. That's how you represent an identity matrix. Next is the null matrix where all the elements are equal to 0. It could be a square matrix or it could not be a square matrix. It does not matter but all the elements have to be equal to 0. The significance of null matrix is that if you subtract one matrix from the same matrix like you have 2 minus 2 equal to 0 similarly if you sub if you subtract one matrix from the other which, which where both the matrices are equal then it does not give you a 0 it gives you a 0 matrix or a null matrix. That's the significance of the null matrix. Of course, we'll have a look at the algebra of matrices in the coming lectures also. 
so for more references and study material solved examples etc you can now look at our website which is live now www.freeshiksha.co.in thank you so much